Welcome back to the Deeper Devotion Podcast. This is Jordan, your host, and I am excited to get into part two of a rule of life. Now, last week we had part one, and what we did was we looked at and defined from a um, heart posture perspective what a rule of life is and what a rule of life is not. And so if we go back and look at the definitions we had uh, from John Mark Comer, who, again, I believe is uh, one of the leading experts, I would say, on this and someone that I follow very closely in my own walk with Jesus. And he defines a rule of life as a schedule and a set of practices and a relational rhythms that create space for us to be with Jesus, become like him and do as he did as we live in alignment with our deepest desires. It is a way of intentionally organizing our lives around what matters most, God. Now, as I had said last week, um, when he says alignment with our deepest desires, we have to remember that um, he doesn't mean our strongest desires, that sometimes um, from the flesh there are things that we crave and desire, but aren't necessarily our deepest. And when we've um, had that transformation of the work of the gospel in our lives, our deepest desires are reshaped and aimed towards the kingdom of God. Of God. And so that's what a rule of life is. And what a rule of life is not is that it is not rules and laws and systems um, for life to define success and failure in regard to your relationship to Jesus and to your salvation. These are not things that you do to earn salvation, um, spiritual practices being. Um, set together in a rhythm and a, and a schedule aren't to get you more trophies on being a better Christian, but to orient your life around what matters most, that being God. So I asked a few questions at the end of the podcast last week. I say, what is my current rule of life? Because one thing we have to remember is that the question is not, do I have a rule of life? Rather, it is, what is my rule of life? Because we all order our lives around something. We all um, operate and live and schedule our lives in a certain way that reflect the things that we care the most about. Some sub-questions under that are what rhythms do I have set in place on a daily or weekly or monthly basis? What are my highest priorities? And Maybe what are some unhealthy rhythms I have in my life? And so that was a way to just take, um, just take a look at where you might be at, um, and it's that's important for what we might talk about today. But then the second question was, what are the habits I want to set in place right now? And so I gave physical, mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual as some different um, subgroups of different habits that we want to form. So for me, I personally want to set into place um, habits that I am physically active. I love watching football. I love watching movies with my my wife. But something that I also love doing and want to do on a regular basis is play pickleball and lift weights or things like that. So because our our faith is requires all of us. It doesn't just require our spirit. It doesn't just require our emotions or just our thoughts or just our relationships or just our bodies. It's everything. It's a holistic thing. So I think that's really important as we dive into practical ways to set up a rule of life. And then the last question I asked was, what is holding me back from taking a step forward in this? Could be your kids could be a job, could be just self-discipline, or could be even sin. But I encourage you to be honest. And so as we pick up today, um, we're going to be looking at um, some practical ways to implement a rule of life. Um, 
So let's dive into that. And I can't wait to see the fruit that this bears in our lives. So there are a few tips first. So tip number one is start where you are, not where you think you should be. I think it's really easy when we uh, start new things or want to make a change for the better in our lives to look at a whole list of things that we want to be doing and expect ourselves to do that right away. So with my example of wanting to be more active, um, if I if I expect myself uh, to go to the gym every single day for an hour, that's already probably a goal that will fall apart after a week because it's just taking a lot. But then on top of that, if I go and I expect myself to be able to uh, lift, say, 50 pounds instead of the 30 pounds I actually can, I'm going to hurt myself. And then I'm also not going to want to go back. And so there's this idea that we, we love to think about where we should be. Um, to hi- to have goals and ideal places. But with everything, including a rule of life, we have to be willing to start where we are. We have to start somewhere. Um, we've talked about uh, silence and solitude. And it's, it's easy to think that, oh, I should be able to do that for, you know, five minutes. But then it becomes something that you can't even get to two. So instead of setting yourself up for failure and to uh, not reach your goals immediately, but if you make the habit of just starting somewhere, of just doing something, and that being almost the accomplishment of saying, okay, instead of five minutes of silence and solitude, I'm going to do one minute. I'm going to just center myself. And then I'll grow to two minutes next week or something like that. Um, it's it, There's a quote in a book by John Mark Comer. I'll be using that book um, called Practicing the Way quite a bit in this podcast. Um, and it says this under a similar tip. It says, in our zeal, it's hard to not overreach and attempt to live like a monk from day one. This is a strategy doomed to fail. And then it goes on to say that in step one, we must find God in the contours of our actual lives, not the lives we wish we had, used to have, or planned to have, but the lives we actually have here and now. So um, think about those things maybe that you thought were holding you back from taking your next step. So say you have kids. You can't expect yourself to do all of these things and have a a perfect life away from your kids that they don't bother you, that they don't take up more of your time, that you don't have to cook for them, that you don't have to do their laundry, that you don't have to take them to practices. That's That's not what this is trying to be or do. This is saying in the midst of that, what are ways that you can orient your life around God? and what he has for you fully in the season of life. So that's tip one. Start where you are, not where you think you should be. Number number two, tip number two, um, all of these are found in the Practicing the Way book. So we'll talk about these, and then we'll get into um, maybe some practical steps. Tip number two is um, when orienting and starting a rule of life of um, – adding things in, it's easy to just simply think addition. Just, I need to do more. I need to do more of this. I need to do more of that. I need to read my Bible more and I need to pray more. But I don't think that's what Jesus has for us. I remember we talked about Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, and he says, like, I don't, I don't have anything that won't fit, that will be too burdensome. But come to me. And I will show you real rest. 
what God has in our relationship with him and how that actually plays out is not um, more to-dos, but more ways we get to be with him. And so tip number two is think subtraction, not addition. Following Jesus is not about doing more, but honestly doing less. So here's another quote from Practicing the Way. It says, it's tempting to make your rule of life a list of things to do. And that's not all bad. But for most of us, it's just as important, if not more so, to focus on what we're not going to do, to build margin into the architecture of our lives. Now, let's think about um, these beautiful things that we call cell phones. I think that um, they're an awesome resource but they've also become a, a pretty incredible distraction. These things that have social media on them and the internet and all types of games and work emails while you're not even at work. And, you know, I, I can make a whole list. But maybe putting into your rule of life isn't simply just reading scripture and prayer, but it's creating a time that you have a technological rest or maybe even a Sabbath one day a week. And during that day, you don't get on your phone. I know for my wife and I, we have started doing a technology free hour before bed. We invested into a analog alarm clock and we leave our phones outside of the bedroom. This has been beautiful. My rest has been so much better. Quality time with my wife has been so much better. And I really don't miss out on much. So that's just one practical example that it's not about just adding more, but could be about taking away things. So that's tip number three. Think, or that's tip number two. Think subtraction, not addition. Now, Number three is take a balanced approach. So this is uh, from the Practicing the Way book, and it has a graph. Um, And a few weeks ago when we were walking through the different spiritual disciplines and practices, we walked through eight total. Those are not all. That is not a complete list, but some of the more um, important and uh, mainstream practices that allow us to create a rule of life and actually practice being with Jesus. Um, But on here it has a table that's marked by four points. Um, The way that it's categorized is adhering to the verbiage we used a few weeks ago with talking about the practices of disciplines of engagement versus disciplines of abstinence. But then it also has a spectrum of things to do alone, and things to do in community. I think that's a really good point as well because this this rule of life thing is important to have on your own. It's important to set up rhythms and be intentional about the way you're living, especially um, in intimate moments, just yourself and God. But it's also a way to orient your life with other people and your relationships and especially your church to be doing similar things. And so uh, taking a balanced approach means having different disciplines or practices that encompass, uh, you know, stopping and being alone of things like silence and solitude and allowing yourself to be still, to dismiss the thoughts and to actually encounter the things that haven't been unearthed, allowing the Holy Spirit to encounter those things and refresh you, refresh your heart. But it's also about doing things in community, like celebrating and worshiping and going to church. There are things that you can do as a discipline of engagement, but you do alone, right? It's um, reading scripture and studying. It's praying. But then there are also things that you um, abstain from, 
but you do so in community, like a Sabbath or generosity and simplicity. So it's it's really important to take a balanced approach so that it's not so heavy to one way that that becomes the way you connect with Jesus or um, it becomes unhealthy. And so there's a, it says this, it says, you can plot the practices of Jesus along four access points, disciplines you do alone, those you do in community, and then disciplines of engagement and of abstinence. It's really important to get um, and touch at least uh, two or three of those. So that was tip number three. Tip number four is to take into account your personality and spiritual temperament. Now, I've been trying to brainstorm a way to put this in layman's terms that um, not only I understand better, but as I talk about this with others, that they kind of grasp it. And so I kind of refer to this as a spiritual personality. This means that there are going to be people, um, like my wife, for example, who love the outdoors, love nature, love creation. And through loving God and nature and creation, they connect more with God. And that's, that's okay. Everybody's different. For me... I would probably do something like contemplative. I would probably be a contemplative that it defines it as loving God through quiet adoration. I am somebody who loves um, silence and solitude, who loves to rest and abstain from things, who doesn't mind uh, taking things off the schedule or anything like that so I can pause, that I can pray, that I can become still and the things that are going on within me that I don't even have the time sometimes to um, focus on in those moments, I get to welcome the Holy Spirit into my emotions and um, my spirit to refresh me and to reorient my perspective. So it has nine different uh, spiritual personalities and follows it up with a paragraph that says this. Quote, no one of these is better than the others. Tragically, we humans tend to moralize our preferences, which can cause great harm to others who are different than us. The church tradition you grew up in or were saved into may have emphasized one or two dominant pathways that are different from your preferred approach to God. To grow, you may need to expand your horizon of possibility and explore new pathways to God. This is another way to um, take a balanced approach of uh, doing things that are very easy for you, like going out into nature and going for a bike ride or a run and not even wearing headphones or listening to any music, but you are just in awe and find yourself connecting and being more aware of God's presence in your life. That's extremely important to do. But maybe you aren't somebody who loves to... Um, connect with God through music and dance and celebration. And there may be an opportunity for you to not just challenge yourself, but become more open and see how God is involved in every aspect of your life in different personalities. And so tip number five is to take into account your season of life and stage of discipleship. Now, I love the paragraph that John Mark Comer writes here. And after this, um, I'll give you a few opportunities to um, hear maybe some practical ways on how to uh, build a rule of life. And then I will also give a link to a rule of life builder that can kind of help tangibly give you something. So. Take into account your season of life and stage of discipleship. It says this, Life is all about seasons. And just as our schedules, budgets, and relationships change in various seasons of our journeys, so should our rule of life. If you have little kids at home, start small. Be gentle with yourself. And remember that children can be like monastic bells to remind you that your time is not your own. Every childlike interruption to your rule can function as an invitation to surrender control and become a person of self-giving love. 
Don't fight against your season. Work with it. The key is to know your season of life and stage of development and adjust your practice accordingly. So there's a few more tips throughout the book, but here is where I want to talk about um, actually building a rule of life. And so um, what I invite you to do is um, I'm working on building some kind of uh, rubric type uh, resource. Oh, Siri. I tell you, they try to interrupt you at any moment. Distractions. <laughs> working on trying to build a, re- a uh, rubric resource that will um, kind of help us with this. But what I think would be best is if you have a sheet of paper or you use your notes on your phone or wherever you go to um, take notes or maybe you have a journal is write down the different spiritual disciplines. Maybe it's just the eight that we walked through. Maybe you find another list that you think fits better. Maybe you walk through um, The Spirit of the Disciplines by Dallas Willard or you go through Practicing the Way by John Mark Comer. Um, But whatever it is, I invite you to write down the different lists, the different list of practices and disciplines. And then on a different axis, so whether you write it vertically or horizontally, I invite you to write daily as a section, weekly as a section, and then seasonally as a section. And then as you go through, um, if you're married, I advise going through this with your spouse, um, thinking about maybe if you have kids or maybe you're an empty nester or maybe you're single and you get to choose what you do. Um, But sit down and look at the different practices and how you can do those in different ways. Um, parts of your schedule of daily, weekly, or seasonally. So here we have a sample rule of life. So this sample is by Brittany. She's a graduate student in her 20s. And so this this wouldn't be something that most of this looks like for you, but this is just a way to look at it. So weekly, um, she takes a Sabbath Every Sunday. So every Sunday she rests, she reflects, she worships, and she delights in God. Daily she prayer, she prays, she spends time with God through prayer. Solitude, every, every month or seasonally, she reflects on how she is meeting her goals and living throughout her rule of life and where she needs to grow. Also, generosity monthly, she tithes. In scripture, she has a daily practice of spending time with God through Bible study. And then for community, she has a weekly practice of participating in church at the Sunday evening service at Young Adults Group on Monday night. And monthly or seasonally, she connects with her peer mentor and spiritual friend. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot. That's okay. And this might not be what it looks like for you, but I encourage you to sit down Look at your schedule, look at the practices, and go back a few weeks in the podcast to listen how we kind of laid some of those out and see how you might be able to incorporate a few daily or maybe a few weekly and maybe a few monthly slash seasonally to remember to start where you are, not where you think you should be. Get a balanced approach of things you do alone and in community, of things that you do and things that you... um, do less of and see how the Lord bears fruit in your heart from that. Um, my prayer over you is that you would uh, recognize that it is not a set of rules. It is not um, a law that you have to follow that if you don't do this, then you are not a good Christian. I refer to them as spiritual practices a lot because It's practice. We're not perfect at it. But as we do it, as we continue to implement these things into our life, we get better and better and better. It's not for the end goal of getting better. 
but for the end goal of pursuing Christ and looking more like him. So that's been this week's podcast on the rule of life. Um, Next week, we'll be following up a little bit with this and then also seeing how you might be able to deepen your discipleship and take your next step um, in spiritual maturity. So thanks for listening, and this has been the Deeper Devotion Podcast. See ya.